Here are five reasons that the new Beta Cross Trainer sucks. So you guys know I have this 2023 Beta Cross Trainer here and I've been absolutely loving this bike and it's been a whole lot of fun out on the trails. I've been out ripping it, shredding it around, having a great time with the bike, but not everything is all hype and dandy and perfect. There is a couple things that suck and today we're gonna talk about them. Now make sure you guys stay around to the end because at the end of the video, I'm gonna go over and cover the things on how you can actually fix some of these things that suck about the bikes. Now the first thing we wanna talk about that sucks on these bikes is their fuel mileage. Now if you got any generation of cross trainer, you would know that these things suck on gas and it's just that they have a smaller tank than most normal sized dirt bikes and that they just don't get good fuel economy. There's nowhere near as good on gas as the new TBIs or TPI bikes with the fuel injection. These betas are still carbureted and although a carburetor is great and you get extremely great throttle response, they just suck on gas, especially this bike. Now it's turning into the adventure of will we run out of gas? I've had rides where I've only ridden 50 kilometers and I've ridden out of gas, which has just never happened on any of my other dirt bikes. Whereas this cross trainer, I'm always keeping a close eye on the fuel levels on the bike. Now, another thing that's not so great with these bikes is uh, the brakes. They're not no Brembo's, okay? The feel on them is just not as good as a good set of Brembo's. It's hard to beat the Brembo's. Now, these bikes come equipped with some Nissan brakes. You'll see a lot of people talking about online that the brakes, they have too tight of a grab on the front brakes and that the rear brake lever is actually sit too high. So when you got your feet up on the peg, the lever is a little bit too high so you can't necessarily stand on it flat without covering some of the brake. Now the experience I've had with this bike is that the rear brake is kind of lacking and I got to push it pretty far down to get it to actually bite and lock up which can be really annoying on those extremely long downhill descents when you're trying to drag some rear brake because your foot has to be so crooked down to be able to apply the brake forcefully. Other than that they do have good stopping power and they do work great but uh, they're just not no Brembo's. Now one of the ways that they made the Beta Cross Trainer so cheap for people like you and me to be able to afford one of these bikes and get into it is they sacrifice a little bit on suspension. This just has some eh suspension. It's pretty good, relatively good. It's good if you're going slower speeds and hitting obstacles at a slower pace, but as soon as you get a bit more of aggressive riding, the Olin shocks that are in this thing just don't quite stack up compared to like some of the WP forks or to some of the other top of the line stuff you'd see on other enduro bikes. Now the suspension itself, it is pretty good. It'll do pretty much most of everything you want, but once you get to those higher speeds and you're having more harsh impacts, or if you're a really aggressive rider, the suspension might not be the sauce for you. Now, if you are someone who likes to putt around in the trails, do some more gnarly stuff, hit more first, second gear type trails where you're just up over big obstacles and gnarly stuff, then the suspension is going to feel pretty good because it's really soft. It's really plush. But if you are someone who weighs a little bit more, the suspension is going to be way too soft for you. This is really set up for someone around that like 150 pound mark. If you're 200 plus, you're going to be botting out the suspension all the time and you're going to need to get some suspension work done on this bike as soon as possible. Now, not to say that the suspension is bad quality or anything like that. They're pretty good parts, uh, relative speaking. I have seen some guys have some rear shock failures where the rear shock literally falls apart. So maybe that's got something to look into further, but they do offer an upgraded rear shock from Beta, which is kind of funny that they do sell an upgraded factory shock for this bike. It's like they knew it was gonna happen a little bit. But other than that, I, I personally have had zero issues with my suspension. I got 60 hours of ride time, a couple settings on the clickers, and I've been absolutely enjoying the suspension but overall as a package, it just doesn't quite tick the boxes like uh, the KTM that I rode a 300 XCW suspension on that. Mwah. Uh, the Husky TE300, beautiful. Suspension on this, a little bit lacking, a little bit left to be desired, but that is how they got the cost of this bike down. So, you know, so there's some give and take to that. Now, the next thing that sucks with this Beta Cross Trainer is this freaking seat, man. This thing is an absolute freaking two by four on your butt. Now, it definitely incentivizes you to stand up, but the seat itself sucks pretty bad. And uh, I've already torn my seat open on like a five mile an hour crash. Whoa! There's a tree there. So that was a bit uh, underwhelming. I was a little bit not impressed that the seat ripped that quick, that easily. Uh, I've had my other bikes, I've never torn a seat ever in the years of riding and within the first month of owning this bike, I already ripped a hole in the seat. So that's great and it is just extremely uncomfortable. Now this is the Pacific 2023 model and in 2024 they did make a slightly softer seat with a bit more cushioning, but either way, the seats on these bikes are just, they're not it. They are really stiff, really uncomfortable, not all that great to sit on, especially if you are gonna ride this on the road because it is street legal. If you ride on the road, your butt's gonna be tired really quickly. 
Now this isn't specific to the cross trainer in particular, but it's specific to all betas and that they're just electronics are just not up to par like the rest of the dirt bikes in the lineup. So you'd see like the KTMs, the Husqvarna's, you name it. They're just, they're not that great of electrical connections. They're not that waterproof. And we see a lot of people having corrosion issues. We've seen it where the ECU pin falls off and uh, ends up killing your bike because then it kills the oil injection and then you're not oiling your motor anymore and it goes kaboom. The biggest downfall to the actual like quality of the bike I'd say is the electrical connectors. They're just not all that great. And I highly recommend you doing what we're gonna tell you to do to make sure that you don't have any electrical faults because you can kill your bike with the electrical system that they have on this bike. And now I'm just gonna throw in a little bonus one that sucks about this bike is the plastics. They are so freaking brittle. They're super duper thin and they break so easily, like extremely easy. I've, I've flipped my other bikes and had them do cartwheels and and they were totally fine. This bike, you fall at two kilometers an hour and the thing's blown apart. The plastics are absolute trash. And that's that's another thing about the quality of the Beta is the plastics on them are just awful. They don't hold up to nothing. You fall on them, they're gonna break. So uh, make sure you pick up a couple extra sets, especially these tank shrouds. These seem to be what everyone's breaking is these tank shrouds and they're just, they're, yeah, they're just not good quality. But what I can say that doesn't suck is at least they're not that expensive. So like compared to a Husky, if you wanna buy one side, it's like 160 bucks per tank shroud. For this bike, you get a pair for 90 bucks. This is Canadian dollars, keep in mind, but that's like half the cost for double the product. So you can see why probably they suck so bad is because they are so cheap, but at least when you break them, they are relatively inexpensive to get a replacement for them, but they do suck. So now that we know what sucks about this bike, let's talk about how you can fix it on your bike. And these are the fixes I've done to mine to make it as best as possible and suck as little as possible. So the first thing when we're talking about the gas mileage, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and make sure you check your float height. Usually the floats are not set correctly on these bikes and you're just pouring gasoline out the bottom overflow, which is not gonna help your mileage whatsoever. And they also offer an IMS extended tank that can go on your bike to further increase the fuel capacity. So you put the IMS tank on there, set your float height and you should be just all right with your fuel levels on the bike for a day's ride. Now you're still not gonna get as good as gas mileage as the fuel injected bikes. They're just so efficient at what they do compared to the carburetor bike. But I gotta say, I love the carburetor and the response you get with the carb. It is super snappy and it is just right there all the time. <laughs> to deal with any of the electrical crap that has to do with the fuel injection system. So it's a very simple bike. This bike is extremely easy to work on and there's just really not a whole lot to it. Now, as for the braking situation, you can go ahead, you can throw some different brake pads in there, try that, uh, see how they feel for different bite, as well as for the rear. If you're finding that the rear brake pedal is sitting up too high, uh, they do offer a stepped down brake pedal so that your brake pedal sits a little bit lower so it's not quite up as so high in the air because it does sit pretty high up. But that's about all you can do for your brakes there. Now, as for your suspension, there is a whole slew of options you can do. You could swap out the entire fork, swap out the entire rear shock. But if you want to keep the original suspension and you just want to modify it without spending the thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars because it can get extremely expensive extremely fast with your suspension what i strongly recommend you guys would do is go over and check out amp suspension talk to buddy aaron same name as me great name by the way there aaron go ahead send him a message talk with him and he can get you set up with this and set up your suspension he is the guy he's the guru with the beta cross trainer suspension so if there was one guy to trust it'd be aaron at amp in the united states once again it's still not exactly cheap you got to send your forks out take your bike bike apart, be without a bike for a while, but it's the most cost-effective way at getting the best out of the original suspension that can come on the bike. Now, when it comes to talking about that seat, there's a couple things we can do. First thing is some padded riding shorts. That's gonna help you out. Cheapest way, padded riding shorts. I swear by them. I use them all the time. They save your butt. Literally. Second thing is you can go ahead and pick up one of the seat concept seats for the bike. They sell a couple different variations of it. Some extra wide, extra thick, whatever you're looking for, seat concepts will have you covered. So check them out if you wanna get a bit more of a comfortable seat than the original two x four that comes on the bike. Now, as for all the electrical components on your bike, if you haven't seen my video on how you uh, can go ahead and make sure all your connections are waterproof or as water resistant as freaking possible, go ahead and click up in the corner or down in the description. You guys can check out my video about that. You definitely need to go over your connections and uh, 
uh, don't be riding around if you haven't put anything on them because you will get corrosion and you're gonna have issues down the line and it's not a lot of fun. So make sure you go ahead and check that out. Now for our final bonus thing that sucked about it with the plastics, unfortunately, this is truly one of the things that sucks about this bike. There's nothing you can do about it. There's no aftermarket support. All you can run is original beta plastics and that's just the way it is. It's unfortunate and that thing does truly suck about the beta cross trainer. The plastics are just brittle as all hell. They're gonna break on you and to expect it and have extra sets on hand. Make sure you go down below, click like, click subscribe for more. If you guys learned anything new, let me know down below in the comments section. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.